Okay, so this should be a pretty quick video here, kind of the basics of microscope drawings, you know, what's expected, and maybe some of the errors that uh, we can try to avoid along the way. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our microscope, and we're going to select, to get started, the lowest magnification possible, the lowest power objective lens. And we'll look through the eyepiece, of course, and when we do, we're going to see a round view. This is what's called our field of view. It's the view that you can actually see when you're examining a specimen. Now pretend we're looking at these cells right here. These were cells taken from an onion skin, an onion peel. Well, now we have some needs to address. So the first need I want to address is a title. Tell the viewer of your drawing, your observation, what the specimen is. What are you actually looking at? The next would be, what is the total magnification of the microscope? Remember, science is repeatable. And if you have a really interesting observation that you are sharing, the only way you're going to be able to repeat it is if you uh, address what the total magnification of the microscope is. Well, then we have to do our drawing, an accurate depiction, an accurate drawing of what you're able to see. And then finally, we can add some labels, some identifying characteristics to help point out what it is we are observing. Well, let's get ready to do our drawing. Here's our blank field of view that we're going to soon draw in. And our first decision is, should we use a pen or a pencil? Now, this should be an easy answer, I hope. We're going to do a drawing. There is a high probability of making a mistake. Well, let's go ahead and select a pencil. It's cleaner. If you do make a mistake, it erases better. So we're going to use a pencil. Now, the first thing is, let's select the title. How about microscope drawing? After all, we're making a microscope drawing. Well, I hope you realize it's too vague. Maybe cells. Cells for a title. After all, these are cells. Again, too vague. Be specific. Tell the viewer what it is you're looking at. Cells taken from an onion peel. Okay, so next I'm going to focus on the magnification. Now, earlier I said we're going to select the microscope for the lowest power possible. So there we go. Low power. Well, I hope you see the problem. Low power is not specific. Tell the viewer of your drawing what is the actual microscope set for. And in this case, pretend the lowest power was 100 times magnification. Now that might vary depending on your microscope you're using. Don't assume that every microscope in the world has a low power of 100. So be specific and tell the viewer what the magnification is. And now we can you know, start to focus on the drawing. Now let's say prior to doing the activity that you're doing in, in class, let's say you were reading through your book and you saw a real nice diagram of a plant cell, maybe an animal cell side by side for comparison. And then when you look through the microscope, should we just start to draw from our memory all these beautiful cells that we saw in our textbook? Well, one of the things I hope you'll get from this video is no. Draw an accurate representation of what you're actually seeing. And so when I look at this picture right here, an accurate representation of this picture. I'm going to begin with my pencil and I'm going to do my drawing here. And notice I only filled about half the view. What about this other half? Well, notice how the half that I completed looks pretty much like the half that I did not complete. So because the entire field of view fits this pattern here, I'm okay. You don't need to fill in the entire field of view as long as, you know, uh, what you did fill in is a fair representation. So we can go ahead and just kind of leave it like this. Now let's just focus on the drawing. You know, from this picture, I can tell that there are really three parts I'm going to have to label. You know, one being the cytoplasm. You know, cells have an interior fluid-filled space called the cytoplasm. And these are eukaryotic plant cells taken from an onion, so there's their nucleus. And because these are plant cells, I know the outer boundary is the cell wall. So I've gone ahead and I've labeled neatly the characteristics that I'm able to identify. You know, let's take a moment to focus on some errors that I've seen over the years. What if I label the cell wall like this with an arrow? Well, the error would be to use the arrow. Straight lines touching the cell part. And the reason is, look at the arrowhead. It's actually touching the cytoplasm, but it's pointing towards the line. So there's a little bit of confusion. What am I actually identifying with the arrow? 
we can fix that by using a straight line that's actually touching the cell part you are identifying. Another common error would be to do this, labeling the nucleus inside of the field of view. The labels really should be on the outside for a very simple reason. Whatever you include inside of your field of view, you are claiming that you can actually see underneath the microscope. You can't actually see the word nucleus typed underneath the microscope. So a straight line touching the nucleus off to the side of the field of view. And how about this, labeling the cytoplasm like this? Well, I hope you see the, the common mistake here it would be the crisscrossing of the lines. It gets a little messy if you have to label four, five, six, seven different parts when you have you know, multiple lines crisscrossing one another. So a nice straight line to the center of the, of the object you are identifying, the cytoplasm. Now I've already labeled the nucleus, but I can still show you another common error I've seen over the years. Again, uh, one of the things that I want you to focus on is horizontal lines and horizontal labels. If you have to label four, five, six, seven things and they're all written like this, it gets really sloppy and really confusing. So a nice straight line with a nice horizontal label and, and there you have a good drawing. Now, remember we said earlier our microscope was set to low power, which in this example was 100 times magnification. Let's zoom on into a higher magnification. So right now I just have it labeled high, but let's say we've zoomed in our microscope to the highest power possible on your particular microscope. Well, now we have to do another drawing. Again, a fair representation of what we're seeing. We said earlier these are cells from an onion peel. No reason to change the title. Now the difference being is the magnification. In this picture, let's say that this was a magnification of 400x, 400 times stronger than what the human eye is able to see naturally. Well, now we have to do our drawing. And so when we do our drawing, we're trying to do a fair representation of what we're seeing and hopefully this looks okay to you. Now if I focus on labels, I can start by you know labeling horizontal lines touching the actual part, the cell wall. Maybe next I can identify the cytoplasm. Maybe next I can identify a nucleus. Now notice inside of some of the nuclei there's a darker spot inside the nucleus that would be the nucleolus so with a higher power you can see more detail often which means there's more parts to identify and here we have another example of a microscope drawing so as I wrap up this video I want to point out one other common error that I've seen over the years here we have a hundred magnification onion skin cell peel on the left and a 400 magnification of the same specimen on the right. When we do our drawing, try to draw a fair, ac accurate representation as we've said before. Same thing with the, the picture on the right. Try to draw a fair, accurate representation. And notice this is the common error I've seen from time to time, is the cells virtually look identical, even though the picture on the right was magnified 400 times and the picture on the left only 100. So this has to be a mistake here because again, the cells magnified 400 should appear much larger. If I do a fair representation of what I'm actually seeing, maybe it comes out looking like this. And I can clearly see more detail on the picture to the right than the picture to the left. So try to focus on drawing an accurate representation of what you're seeing. So I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.